Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today we have a little bit of a different kind of video. We're going to be doing another tier list video today. These have been doing really, really well on my channel. You guys seem to enjoy these. Today we're going to be taking a tier list of the top five teams in the LCS and the top five teams in the LEC, putting them all together, and I'm going to be ranking them as if they formed like one kind of, uh, I guess, super league between the top teams, the top uh, Western League of Legends teams. I didn't decide like what would be the, t the top 10 teams from that, but I, I think this would be pretty close to it. I think there's five real solid teams in Europe and five uh, hopefully pretty solid teams in North America. Um, I mean, we could maybe argue maybe exactly which five teams should have been on here. I know some people maybe say FlyQuest should be over Evil Geniuses. I'm sure those people say like, oh, Vitality or Misfits or whatever should have been in. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to do this idea for a while. People have been suggesting this, doing some kind of like uh, NA and EU collaborative tier list since I do a lot of NA stuff. I do a lot of EU stuff. So putting it together should be fun. I'm not sure exactly how well this video is going to do or what even it's going to be called or anything like that just yet. Um, but I think this should be fun it should be interesting just kind of thinking about uh if these teams uh came together and just actually when they're compared uh how well they go up against each other because it's something obviously people debate about all season long people are always talking about um but we don't actually get to see na and eu playing very often uh but especially like the middle tier teams the bottom tier teams we don't really get to see uh play ever uh but yeah so we're just gonna be going through this list i'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions uh and this should be a fun one but before we get into that i just want to mention real quick if you're not already subscribed definitely click that subscribe button really quick it's fast it's free it's easy helps you guys stay up to date on all my latest content and i would appreciate it a ton uh you know we just hit 5500 subscribers we're starting out the new year right hopefully 2021 is another big year for us um also if you enjoy my video if you enjoy my content anything we do here clicking that like button also helps me out a ton with the youtube algorithm everything like that um with that being said here we go uh again taking the top five teams from each region i didn't want to do the top 10 i didn't want to do all 20 teams from the two um because i thought it would just get really hard to like rate the teams at the bottom like who knows who's going to be better between Golden Guardians and like Astralis and who even really cares? The spicy stuff's in the top teams. Um, and I think hopefully we, we have some interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, so first up, I want to start out with the S tier. It's going to be just one team in the S tier. This is going to be G2 Esports. I think they are clearly the best team in either region. I don't really uh, think or expect, at least on paper, any team from either region uh, to be competing with them. Now, maybe Fnatic just really clicks randomly and they're able to take off. Maybe Rogue really takes a big step up this year. Maybe Team Liquid, Alfari comes over to NA as a beast. Maybe Team Liquid is able to do something crazy. Maybe Perch is able to really, really super hard carry Cloud9 and Fudge ends up being a beast. Um, but right now, on paper, the best team by far in either region with the least question marks um, the most established veterans are going to be one of the best teams in the world they're clearly the best team in the west is going to be g2 and i don't really even think it's that close i think they perhaps uh they have an argument to be made that they have the best player in every single position not only in europe but in the west uh where obviously most people would say you're finding the best players anyway so adding na to it doesn't really mean too much uh, but there's an argument to be made that uh, g2 has the best player uh at every single position uh in the west and one of the best players in the world at every single position uh they're a team who again they're coming off uh, a second place at Worlds two years ago. Uh, top four finished this past Worlds. Um, they're expected to be a top four team once again because I really do think they got better in this offseason. Um, and yeah, they're they're you know trying to be compared to the other teams in the world, not the other teams in the West. Uh, so yeah, they're number one. Want to get them out of the way right off the bat. Um, so starting at the top. But then starting at the bottom, we also have Evil Geniuses, who I have as like the fifth best team in North America. You could put FlyQuest here as well, but I still think they'd be towards the bottom because they have so many young players, so many question marks. I went with Evil Geniuses just because they have more established veterans uh, but but if they were to make this 10 team league i would project them to finish last uh to me they just have too many question marks is jazuke actually going to be consistent is he going to be uh you know kind of that that class mid laner um or would he be really one of the weaker mid laners in this entire league um and that would be rough and then also definitely i think would want to be one of the weaker players in this entire league uh he's a big question mark for me at the 80 carry position i love what they're doing in certain parts of the team um i'm a big fan of sven scaring i think he's very very solid um i, I don't know if he's maybe the MVP Svensk Aaron that he used to be at one point in his career, uh, but he is very, very solid. He's super consistent. Impact, same thing there. Uh, maybe not at the peak of his career anymore, but you are getting a very, very consistent, reliable player. Um, and then they have a big playmaker in the sport as Ignar as well. So I like what they did this offseason, um, but... I would have been happier if they ended up going with somebody like Nemesis in the mid lane over Jizuke, uh, and if they were able to get another AD carry, uh, maybe even somebody like King in the bot lane uh, instead of Deathly. I'm just really not a big fan of Deathly, but maybe he'll surprise this year, um, and maybe Jizuke can go back to his old ways of being a little bit more consistent and being that huge carry threat, but that is not what he's done for us lately. That is not what we saw last year in North America. Um, so again, I think G2 is clear, clearly the best team. I think Evil Geniuses is clearly the worst team, um, and then from there, we can kind of fill things in. 
Um, uh, so I guess we can start off with Schalke, who I would have as like a C tier team uh, in this league. I think they would be one of the weaker teams. Uh, again, Schalke is a hard team for me to rate. So first up, they were just really inconsistent last year. Obviously, um, you know, having the the crazy, crazy bad start and then the crazy, crazy hot run towards the end of the year. Um, and they had some new moving pieces coming in this well on top of that. Obviously, they lost Oduwamne. Broken Blade is coming in. Is Broken Blade going to be an upgrade over Oduwamne? Is he going to be a downgrade? Is he going to be a side grade? That's going to be hard to tell. I'm really, really interested to see how BB is able to do over in the LEC because um, I think he is a big carry threat. And when he on he can really really pop off he can really shine uh, but obviously the lec is a different beast than the lcs and bb has had plenty of his own issues in terms of just like can he play weak side can he play tanks can he play consistent enough can he be uh you know that carry that that your team needs um but lec top lane is one of the weaker positions so bb has a chance to go over there and do really really well but again will he be better than oduwamne will he be a better fit for this team will he make that team better i don't really know it, it's hard to tell um they also have limit coming into the support position uh, i think he should be a, a really solid player for them i think he is going to be uh, hopefully an upgrade for this team and, and he should be really good and exciting to watch uh, Abadage, Gilius you know, some other guys that are you know there Gilius came in and was a beast uh, during his time with Schalke uh, Abadage has got a guy who we've seen be very very up and down he's been Faker Dage and he's been everything in between all the way down to whatever the shit version of, of that is uh, so uh, Schalke is a weird weird team for me um, in the end again when you're taking the top 10 teams uh, from the two regions combined there's a lot of great great players a lot of great teams and stuff and Schalke is not bad i think they're going to be an interesting team this year i think they could finish you know fourth or fifth in the lec um but i don't think they're better than any of the the north american teams uh towards the bottom of the leagues uh either uh so i just think it's interesting uh, i have them as kind of one of the weaker teams and again just because they had that miracle run uh you know they still they've still lost in the playoffs they still didn't make it to worlds and then mad lions who ended up uh making it to worlds they still didn't look that great at Worlds. so they were a worse team than mad lions who wasn't even that good by the end of the year um so yes people are riding this uh you know shulka miracle run wave but you got to keep it in check you got to you know take things as it is i don't think we should get too too hyped up or overrate shulka all of a sudden uh either uh, then I have 100 Thieves in the B tier. I could see 100 Thieves being in the C tier as well. Um, and maybe I will even start them off there. Uh, to me, this team is very, very interesting. They're very, very exciting. Uh, I personally am in the camp that FBI is a very, very great AD carry. Um, he has a chance to really be maybe the best AD carry in North America in this upcoming split. But I get, I have been getting a lot of feedback and a ton of people saying, and I do agree that we need to see more from FBI. Yes, he had an amazing split and even had a very, very solid year. But we need to see him and who he really do this again. You know, if you want to be considering that upper echelon and that upper tier, you need to do it again. Uh, but this team is very, very solid. They're obviously the four pieces of Golden Guardians who uh, looked really great towards the end of last year, uh, even though they lost to TSM barely. TSM then went on to win the LCS. So Golden Guardians, you know, was maybe uh, the second best team uh, at the time. Uh, they look very, very good, and obviously they're getting a huge upgrade in the top lane, adding someday. So they have a huge carry in someday. They have what I think is going to be a huge carry in FBI, but the clear weak point here on this team is Demonte. Uh, he is definitely not a world-class mid laner. He is very, very solid in North America, but European mid laners are a different beast. I think 100 Thieves would actually struggle um, leaving the LCS and going to play more European teams. Um, when we saw Demonte at Worlds, um, he did not look great. Uh, he did kind of get hard exposed. Uh, and yes, he plays that facilitative style, and he can really uh, do good enabling huge carries like someday like FBI um, but I think he would have some rough landing phase I think he would have some rough games I think that would uh, lead to kind of a lot of 100 thieves losses uh, then we have uh, Mad Lions who I actually have in the, the next rank above I got them in the B tier that logo is kind of hard to see on there this team, I think, is interesting because Arome was really seen as kind of the weak point for this team last year, um, and he doesn't deserve all the blame for kind of what happened to Mad Lions as they started to falter out and kind of flamed out of Worlds, not even making it uh, to the main stage, but uh, he does, does get a lot of blame. Obviously, Arma is coming in. People think he is going to be a very, very su substantial upgrade in the top lane, and that has people really, really excited about Mad Lions because this team has some absolute threats. Humanoid, one of my favorite, honestly, one of my favorite players in the world to watch. He is so, so fun and exciting. Uh, that dude is an absolute beast. Car and Kaiser in the bot lane. Uh, you know, Kaiser had weeks uh, and months and stretches where he looked like a potential MVP candidate uh, in the LEC. 
But one thing I'm a little bit worried about for this team is losing Shadow, uh, going with Aloya. People are excited about Aloya. People are hyped up for him, but I think that could be a downgrade in the jungle. So even if they are getting better in the top lane, maybe they're getting a little worse in the jungle. Um, this team is loaded. They have a ton of threats, but again, they flamed out towards the end of last year uh, and they didn't really look that great. Uh, and, you know, like Team Liquid, who was the third seed from the LCS, they ended up making it to Worlds uh, and Mad Lions didn't. So I think there we can kind of start to make the comparisons between the LCS and the LEC that maybe even though, uh, you know, the LEC has G2 and even has Fnatic who's been doing pretty well at Worlds uh, that the mid-tier teams in the LCS and LEC maybe are not that far off maybe they're not that far apart then we have uh who should we go with next we're gonna go with tsm who i also have in the b tier i do rate them above mad lions um i honestly am pretty excited about tsm for this season uh again it sucks losing bjergsen and double lift but if you're gonna lose bjergsen um i think having a guy like uh power of evil coming in is great it's one of the better options you could have as far as like the the options available to tsm we're gonna be uh losing double lift some people also think might suck as well but honestly i was in the boat of i didn't think double lift was that great last year um and even if loss isn't that great either uh, I don't think he's going to be like super, super worse than double lift, but I think he has a chance to be really good. Obviously paired up with sword art, uh, who is going to hopefully bring that LPL style of craziness and shot calling and leadership to the team. That should be super fun to watch. I think Spica uh, is a beast. And I think he did honestly really, really well at worlds, even though TSM, uh, went 0 and 6. I think Spica was kind of the shining star on the team. Um, obviously people have a big question mark about Huni in the top lane as well, but Bjergsen is trying to, you know, silence the doubters saying that Huni is ready to go. Um, and that he has a chance to be the best top laner in North America. That's got me hyped up. That's got me excited. Um, you know, I'm just keeping them in the B tier. I think they're going to be a solid team. I think they have a chance to be the third best team in the LCS. I think they have a chance to make it to Worlds, hopefully win a game this year. Uh, but yeah, I, I would rate them ahead of Mad Lions uh, to start the year. Then in the A tier, we have these four teams left. And I think this is a really, really close bunch. But out of this bunch, I think I would say the team that I have the lowest I guess I would have to go with Rogue. This is a team that I'm really, really excited about. This is a team that I like a lot. Uh, they now, uh, you know, Finn was seen as a weak point for this team last year. They have an upgrade in Oduwamne, who he's not the most amazing top player in the world, but he is very, very solid, and he should be a substantial upgrade over uh, Oduwam or uh, over Finn. So that should be really, really exciting. That is going to be great for this team. I think Han Sama is super, super fun to watch. But again, this team did lose Vander. So uh, that could potentially be a big loss. You know, he was a big playmaker for them last year. He was one of the better supports in the LEC. He was uh, just a really, really solid veteran presence. And with Trimby coming in, people are excited for him. But there's a chance that anytime you have a rookie coming in that they don't work out or you just don't get what they expect. Or maybe the, the synergy isn't there with Han Sama. You know, there is a lot of questions marks i think that is a pretty big one for rogue not that some of these other teams don't have question marks as well because they certainly do but uh you know i still have rogue in the hr i still think they're gonna be a very very good team and i think they could even be better than last year but in upgrading the top lane a downgrade in the support i think keeping those expectations uh you know under control i think this is going to be the in my opinion the third best team in the lec they have a chance to uh go to worlds win a couple of games uh and if they can win one or two more maybe they can get out of groups maybe not they're going to be close uh in my opinion so i have them uh towards the bottom of the a tier then, in my opinion, we have Cloud9 right above them. I think this is going to be the second best team in the LCS, uh, and they're going to be super, super fun and exciting to watch. This team is going to be crazy. They have huge playmakers all over the place. Vulcan uh, is crazy. Perks and Blabber, they are going to be so fun to watch together. Um, and yeah, Cloud9 went out this offseason, made a huge splash, got one of the best players in the world um, if Perks is able to regain his old form, which I'm sure he should be able to. Um, you know, I don't think he's just going to not be as good of a mid laner as he used to be. Maybe he won't reach certain peaks or maybe it'll take him a little bit of time to get there. Um, but especially in the LCS, he's going to absolutely shine against, uh, you know, lackluster competition. Uh, the LCS is not known for their mid laners by any means. Um, so I think Perks, Cloud9 is going to be super, super fun to watch. The one big question mark for me here uh, is what's going to go on with Fudge. Exactly how good is he going to be? He did dominate, absolutely dominate the Academy scene last year. People are super, super excited from everyone. Has nothing but good things to say about Fudge. So that has me hyped up. That has me excited. He got to learn from Licorice last year. Got to scrim with him, practice with him all the time, talk with him. Um, so he should be ready to go. He should be good. But how good is he going to be? How fast is he going to be good? How long is it going to take him to kind of adapt to the, you know, the upper tier of the league and all that stuff? Um, I think he should be good. But I'm not ready to put them ahead of Team Liquid, ahead of Fnatic, anything like that. Yeah, I think Cloud9 is going to be an exciting team, a fun team to watch. But I think they'll they'll have some, their ups and downs as well. But Sven, Mithy, Perks coming back together. I think special things are going to happen. Uh, and yeah, that's why I have them above a, a Rogue. Have them solidly in the A tier. Then, next up, we have 
Team Liquid, who I think is going to be the best team in the LCS, but I think I would have them as the third team on this list. Definitely high A tier. They're definitely going to be very, very solid. I'm super excited for them. They went three and three at Worlds last year. They were just one game away from being able to make it out of their groups. The first North American team in two years to make it out of their groups. Uh, and their team got better this offseason. Broxa was a clear problem for this team. They went and got the best jungler in North America in Santorin, and they went and got Alfari from Europe, who I think is going to be, uh, has a chance to be the best top player in the LCS. You know, maybe someday has something to say about that. Maybe Licorice, maybe Impact. There will be some other guys who have something to say about that, but Alfari is for sure going to be in that conversation. Uh, so Team Liquid was good last year, but they got two big upgrades who should be, hopefully, if they mesh well with the team, should be really, really fun and exciting to watch and really uh, give this team a chance to compete at the international level, a chance to go to Worlds to get out of groups and maybe even compete for a semifinal. I think that's what Team Liquid should be aiming for, uh, and that's why I have them in this high A tier above teams like Rogue, above teams like Cloud9, because I think they are really, really complete. I don't think there's a big question mark on this team. They have a solid uh, player at every single position position they're ready to win now uh, and i think they're going to be super super fun to watch and i hope it all comes together uh, exactly how we're envisioning because i know this is what we were talking about last year when they picked up broxa and obviously that didn't work out um but hopefully their moves this offseason uh, are able to work out and finally in the high a tier i think the second best team in this league in my opinion would be Fnatic, and I, you know, this is tough because, yes, Fnatic lost Reckless. Uh, they're moving on from Nemesis. They have Niski in the mid lane. Uh, and Fnatic was, you know, they were inconsistent last year. They were up and down sometimes. I think they went, what, they had a 9-9 nine and nine record at one point. But this team consistently is able to do well in big games. You know, if North America and TSM and the LCS teams uh, always fall short in the big games, in the tiebreakers, at international events, Fnatic is one of those teams that always rises up. Up. And even uh, in a little bit of an up and down inconsistent year for Fnatic, they were still able to make it to the quarterfinals. They got out of groups, made it to the quarterfinals at Worlds, and then had top esports down 2-0 and were just one game away uh, from making it to the semifinals at Worlds and being a top four team. So yes, they lost Reckless. That is a big hit. That is going to suck. But Upset is going to be a very, very serviceable replacement. I think he's going to be a solid AD carry coming in. Um, and if Niski is as good as people expect him to be and fits as well in this Fnatic team as people think he will, then that should be an upgrade in the mid lane. Uh, and that should be pretty substantial because again nemesis was a uh, kind of a big liability uh at worlds last year and and niski has been that before in his career as well but uh he's bringing a different play style a little bit bigger of a champion pool something different to fanatic uh and might just be able to take a step up and take them to the next level but this is it guys this is my tier list of the top 10 Western League of Legends teams. If we took the best of the LCS, took the best of the LEC, and put them together, here's how I think things would shape out. Here's how I kind of rate the teams when we rate them against each other. Again, I think for the most part, uh, I would definitely favor the LEC. Obviously, they have G2, um, and you know maybe the mid-tier teams are a little bit higher, a little bit better. Um, but at the top, I think Team Liquid, Cloud9 are going to be world-class teams this year. I think they're going to be in the mix. I think TSM is just as good as some of these mid-tier LEC teams. Uh, and even 100 Thieves uh, could surprise people and could go on a run this year i think there's a lot of talent western league of legends the future is bright i think it's gonna be an exciting year one of the most highly anticipated professional league of legends scenes uh or seasons really ever before and that is so so exciting but that is pretty much it for this video today guys again definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it, it helps me out a ton with youtube algorithm helping my content get seen by more people uh leave a comment down below let me know what you think i got right what you think i got wrong what does your tier list look like what do you think would happen if the lec and the lcs came together i know there's going to be a ton of debate and a ton of disagreement about this you know keep it civil keep it respectful but i would love to hear your opinions subscribe to update on my latest content hopefully I catch you guys in the next one but until then peace